All right, everybody, welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be taking on the Funky, and we're gonna be brewing a Brett Farmhouse Saison. Hey, if it's your first time here, just wanna say welcome. Thanks for stopping by. So on this channel, I will typically do a grain to glass type video like this one, where I'm taking a beer all the way from the recipe through the mash, boil, fermentation, and all the way to the final beer, uh, all in a single video so you get to see every single piece of that process and how it impacts the final beer. I will also do shorter, more informative videos as well, uh, where I'm not necessarily brewing anything, but I'm talking about brewing otherwise. And I will typically upload roughly every one to two weeks. And if you like that sort of thing, please go ahead, like the video, and also hit the subscribe button for more of that type of content. So today I'm doing a Brett Farmhouse Saison, which is really a style that I've never really explored before. Um, this is going to be a very interesting project and it's going to take a lot of time to put together uh, because Brett takes a long time to ferment. Before I get too far into this video, we're doing this as a co-pitch. I'm going to do a Belgian Saison and a Brett Brooks co-pitch to see what happens uh, over the long term as these two yeasts kind of play together. I'm not aiming for anything super funky, we're just going to try and get some of that Brett Barnyard character in there without being the 100% dominating uh, character of this beer. And I also kind of want to blend that in nicely with the characteristics of a classic Belgian Saison. If you're not familiar with it, Brett or Britannomyces is a certain strain of wild yeast uh, that uh, creates some pretty interesting flavors. Uh, they range from everything from barnyard funk to uh, tropical fruit to sweaty blanket. Um, I don't know, there's a bunch of other random descriptors in there that really don't make very much sense until you've actually tried a bread beer, and then they do make sense, but for some reason they actually still taste good despite the descriptors sounding really awful. Brett is an interesting organism in that it takes a long time to ferment, but it will ferment pretty much anything. It will ferment most unfermentables that typical uh, brewer's yeasts, Saccharomyces variety, uh, cannot actually ferment. It also apparently will go so far as to ferment wood. Um, but, like I said, it takes some time. So, this is going to be a three or four month project here in one video. If it looks like I lost a fight with a beehive, it's because my seasonal allergies are currently peaking right now and um, I feel like crap. That just kind of goes to show we're starting this beer in spring and we're probably going to ferment it all the way through the summer and drink it at the end of the summer in August. That's my target for this. Hopefully by that time we have a highly attenuated beer uh, that is very drinkable and an enjoyable uh, kind of complex showcase of flavors. Saisons are a pretty fun style and to boot you get a huge range of what you can do with them. I'm pretty sure with a Saison you have the widest left and right limit there is for a beer style. It can be light, it can be dark, it can be almost no alcohol, and it can be a ton of alcohol. Um, and a bunch of other factors are in there too. You can do a classic sack fermentation or you can do a Brett fermentation or you can do a sour Saison. Uh, there's a whole lot of different variety there uh, that you can play with. And so today we're going to kind of go for what I would consider to be kind of like a classic farmhouse style. Uh, a little bit of Brett Funk, not too much, uh, still plenty of underlying Belgian character. Anyway, this is going to be the recipe we're going to be working with today. It's going to be a classic Belgian Saison. So we're starting with seven pounds of Belgian Pilsner malt, and my homebrew store stocks Dingaman, so that's what we're using. I'm adding three pounds of flaked wheat to that. That is going to produce a decent amount of protein uh, and other things that are difficult for sack yeast to ferment. However, the brett will be able to ferment this over time. So this gives basically fuel for the brett and allows them to generate the character that we want them to uh, generate. Then on top of that, we're adding a pound and a half of Vienna malt for a little bit of color and a little bit of extra character. Uh, and then a quarter pound of aromatic malt to kind of deepen the malt complexity as well. On top of that, we're adding half a pound of dextrose uh, to kind of aid in drying out the beer. Uh, after all, a Saison, no matter what yeast it is fermented with, should be crushingly dry. Uh, absolute brute beer. Um, ideally, you want these to finish at or below 1.005. Uh, and it, the lower the better in most cases. For hops, I'm going to be adding about 28 IBUs of hops, and we're going to be using all saws in this beer. All of the saws I'm using is 3.1% alpha acid. Uh, we're going to be adding 2.5 ounces of saws at 60 minutes, and then we're going to add 1 ounce of saws at 15 minutes. For our yeast, it's going to be a co-pitch. So we're going to be doing two yeasts at the same time, pitched both uh, right as soon as I aerate the wort and cool it down. 
The first one's going to be Weiss 3724 Belgian Saison, and the second one is going to be Weiss 3112 Britannomyces Bruxellensis. Whether or not I actually pronounced that correctly, that's also known as Brett Brux. Um, but the two of them together should play interestingly because the Belgian Saison strain is notorious for stalling out about halfway through fermentation and sitting there for like two weeks not doing anything and then picking up again eventually. However, between the Belgian Saison and the Brett Brux, everything in this beer should get fermented out. Of course, there is the option to make this as a regular Saison without the Britannomyces, uh, in which case the Belgian Saison gives you the classic Saison DuPont kind of character. However, if you want a faster fermentation that doesn't stall out every time, I would go with the, uh, I think it's 3711, the French Saison yeast or Bell Saison. Uh, Bell Saison's a dry yeast, but both of those are going to ferment out a lot faster, a lot more reliably, um, and you're probably not going to need to wait around as long. However, if you want the Brett character, no matter what happens, you're really going to have to wait around a long time for it and just be patient. For our water profile, we're going to be going with a water profile that's pretty uh, balanced overall, but has a decent amount of uh, bias towards the malty side, uh, simply because this beer is going to be so dry, I don't need to add extra sulfates to make it appear even drier. If none of this is making sense to you, Go ahead, click on this video. It's gonna pop up in the corner. It's gonna to talk to you all about water chemistry and why it's not as complicated as you think it is. This is our water profile. It's uh, 51 parts per million of calcium, six parts per million of magnesium, 26 parts per million of sodium, 103 parts per million of chloride, 62 parts per million of sulfate, and zero parts per million of bicarbonate. And to get that profile, I am starting out with eight gallons of distilled water, and I'm adding two grams of gypsum, two grams of epsom, two grams of sodium chloride, and four grams of calcium chloride. So you should be able to copy that water profile if you are making this beer with distilled water, um, or with an RO system, you should be pretty similar as well. So hopefully that kind of helps you build your recipes. We are mashing this low and slow at about 148 degrees Fahrenheit for about 90 minutes. Uh, that is going to create a very fermentable wort. Uh, we want to get this, again, as dry as we can, uh, and that's one way to do it. So, this is a very highly experimental beer. I'm pretty sure I know what's going to happen, but I'm not 100% sure. And that's kind of the fun thing about brewing. So, we're just going to go ahead and do this. We're going to treat this as kind of a summer experiment and have a lot of fun with it. So hopefully it works out pretty well, and hopefully you guys enjoy watching. Anyway, the water is all heated up to strike temps, and we're going to go over there and mash in. Once the strike water in my Clawhammer Supply 120 volt system reached my required dough-in temperature, I doughed in with the grain bill, being sure to break up any clumps in the mash. Next, I started the recirculation as usual. I let the mash sit for 10 minutes, and then I took a pH measurement and saw a measurement of 5.47, which was pretty much fine, so I didn't do anything to the mash. I let the mash sit at 148 Fahrenheit for the next 90 minutes, and then I raised up to 170 for the mash out. After reaching the mash out temperature, I let it stay there as usual for about 15 minutes and then I pulled out the grain basket and let that drain for another 15 minutes. I also fired up the controller to 100% power to get a jump start on the boil. I pulled a sample of work for the pre-boil gravity reading and I recorded a measurement of 12.5 bricks or 1049, which was actually one point higher than the targeted pre-boil gravity. Once I reached the boil, I added my 60 minute hop addition, two and a half ounces of saz. Then I let the boil continue for another 45 minutes. At that point, I added my 15 minute hop addition, which was one ounce of saz. I also added a Whirlflock tablet and some yeast nutrient, as well as the half pound of dextrose. Lastly, I started recirculating boiling wort through my chiller to sanitize it. This is the best way to ensure that your chilling equipment is sanitary, just boil it. Once the boil had ended, I took the entire thing inside where I could hook my chiller up to the sink and begin chilling, and I let the wort chill down to about 70 Fahrenheit, and then I aerated the wort with pure O2 with a dose of about one minute at full blast. Then I pitched both yeasts uh, with a starter for the Belgian Saison and just the packet for the Brett Brooks.
I took an OG sample and I recorded an original gravity of about 14.7 bricks, or 1060, which was actually right on target for OG, so that was pretty awesome. Alright, so the fermentation on this beer can be done many different ways, but uh, it really is anything but simple. I'm going to start with the case where you're going to be using a regular Saison yeast and no Brett whatsoever. Um, or any other kind of wild or sour yeast. So if you're using just a typical Saison strain, nothing else, uh, then I would start your fermentation at about 68 degrees. Every single day thereafter, I would ramp your temperature up by a single degree, all the way up to about 75 or even higher, probably about 80 degrees, especially if you're using Belgian Saison yeast. If you're using the Belgian Saison yeast, do not be surprised if it stalls out on you about halfway through fermentation and you're parked at like 1030 specific gravity for like two weeks. Just be patient. It's happened to me before. It happens to a lot of people. It just needs a little bit of time and some extra temperature. If it does actually stall out on you, don't be afraid to push it up to like 85 or 90 if you can. Otherwise, rouse it, add a little bit of extra yeast vitalizer or something like that to get the, the whole process going again. But otherwise, if none of that works, just be patient and let it sit. It will get there eventually. The last thing you want to do is package this beer prematurely. Saisons, no matter what yeast you're using, are going to uh, ferment very, very far down. And even if they're at like 1010 or 1008, they may not be done. So just keep that in mind, uh, especially if this is one of your first beers don't bottle this thing early. It can be dangerous, uh, especially if it continues to ferment in the bottle and create additional pressure. If you're kegging, it's not as dangerous because you're not going to uh, exceed the rupturing pressure of a keg, but uh, just keep that in mind if you are bottling. Now, if you're doing a mixed fermentation like I am, there's a couple different ways to do this. You can do a co-pitch like I'm doing, where you pitch both yeasts at the same time, or you can start with your sack strain uh, on brew day, let that ferment out for a while, and then pitch your brett strain later. This is going to basically make your beer a little bit more funky, and um, it's going to give you kind of a different fermentation character. Uh, you're just going to have to keep an eye on it as it does that, and keep it nice and warm for the brett. Brett ferments quite nicely at room temperature, so you don't really need to keep it as cool as you would an ale yeast, um, so don't worry too much about that. At some point, you're gonna need to package this and let it sit and condition. So like I said earlier, either put it in a secondary fermenter or in a keg. I would advise not bottling it right away until it's actually done, or if you have high strength bottles, then, then you might be able to bottle it. The last option, of course, is to do 100% Britannomyces fermentation, which is, again, gonna take a lot longer to actually do, but could produce some pretty interesting flavors as well. Again, keep it warm, don't package too early, and, um, yeah, be patient with it. Anyway, this is my plan. I'm gonna start out at about 70 degrees, then I'm gonna ramp up over the course of two weeks to about 80 degrees, and I'm gonna let it sit at 80 degrees, and if I get the dreaded stall, I'm gonna go ahead and ramp up to 85 degrees and hold it there no more than another week. Um, at that point, I will transfer into a keg. Once it gets in the keg, I'm gonna let it sit at room temperature for about three or four months, but I'm gonna put a spunding valve on the keg set to about 15 PSI. This is gonna basically make sure that the beer carbonates itself, but also doesn't over-carbonate itself. This allows the bread to continue fermentation over time without over-carbonating the beer and uh, keeping it free from an other infection. So, should be interesting to see what happens. Um, I would definitely recommend doing this in a stainless steel vessel if you can, so that you can sanitize it later, because Brett tends to be fairly persistent. And if you ferment this in a plastic bucket, you're probably gonna get some persistent Brett over time. Um, and you just, I would just keep that in mind. Try not to cross-contaminate stuff in your brew house unless you wanna have that Brett character in every single beer you make. So in a nutshell, I'll be fermenting this at about 70 degrees, ramping up to 80 degrees, and then possibly 85 degrees over the course of about two to three weeks. Then I will transfer into a keg, attach a spunding valve set to about 15 PSI, and I will let it age in that keg and self-carbonate for about three months, three to four months, and then uh, we'll hopefully be able to put it in the kegerator and enjoy. Uh, hopefully that all works out. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this experiment and um, I'll catch you guys in, in many months. After extensively degassing the hydrometer sample, we have a final gravity after three months of sitting in the keg and conditioning with the Brett at about 
uh, which is nice and bone crushingly dry. All right, so here we are three and a half months later. My face is no longer swollen and our beer is much, much more matured. So uh, let's talk about this. So the primary fermentation lasted about two weeks and I did that at about 80 degrees. Uh, and I actually did not experience the dreaded stall, which was fantastic. Uh, so after about two weeks, we ended up with a reasonable uh, gravity of about 1010. That told me that most of the work was done. We didn't hit a stall, so we could transfer this into a keg and let it start the conditioning phase. At that point, I did just that. I transferred right into a keg and attached a spunding valve, which I set to about 20 PSI, so that the keg would naturally carbonate over those three months. And that gave it enough time for the Brett to go to work and start chewing on some of those leftover sugars. Even transferring the beer right off of the primary fermentation into the keg at two weeks old, it was actually delicious beer. And you actually got a decent amount of that Brett flavor. Um, I got a really intense stone fruit and kind of tart character to it. Um, in addition to a lot of the, the loveliness that comes from the regular Belgian Saison yeast. So then I let it condition for three months and I tasted it at about one month intervals and just kind of saw how the flavor changed over that period of time. And boy, am I happy I waited as long as I did because this beer has some serious complexity in it. And now we have ourselves a beer that is completely different and uh, in my opinion, really well worth the wait. I apologize in advance for the very slow pour. I have to get this video done today. This is like my only shot at actually filming and tasting this thing to get it out on time. And my kegerator decided to run out of gas today. So we're working with that very little bit of pressure that's left in the uh, keg. But besides that, everything else in this beer is completely awesome. So let's go ahead and pour it. All right, so this beer is called Welcome to the Funky Farm, and it comes in at a nice solid 7.7% ABV and 28 IBUs. The appearance of the beer is a hazy, uh, dark gold, almost orange color. And um, it's actually, it's pretty dark. I, see, I did not expect it to come out as dark as it is. I'm not expecting this to clarify anytime soon, but uh, I'll let you guys know down in the comments if it does. The head on it, when you rile it up, is a nice fluffy white head. Um, and it does actually have pretty decent head retention overall. All right, so now let's talk about aroma. So the aroma off of this thing is actually really very fruity. Um, you get a little bit of that kind of the Brett tartness and the Brett funk. Um, you don't get any of the uh, sweaty goat barnyard type aroma, I don't think, out of this. Um, I'm getting a lot of uh, fruit, so mostly like an apple, a pear, and some stone fruit. Um, it's a little bit of like a raspberry in there as well, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I would say it's most heavy on the berry character. It's like kind of a, yeah, like a raspberry or a blackberry almost, just like a very tart berry. Uh, really kind of nice. All right, so now we'll go in for mouthfeel. All so the overall mouthfeel um, is extremely dry. <laughs> it's, it's a Saison, it should be. Um, the mouthfeel is, it's, you get that flavor experience for as long as it's in your mouth, and then the second you swallow it, it's gone. Um, it's like a dry white wine almost. I probably could have carbonated this to a bit higher level than it was already at, um, because a lot of that uh, unfortunately has kind of made its way out of the beer um, and into the keg since I don't have any gas. But it still has a decent amount of carbonation and zippiness in it regardless. It's just not manifesting itself in the head very well. Overall though, very light in the mouthfeel, that's just the way it should be. And uh, with a little bit more carbonation, this would be uh, really pretty perfect for a Saison. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's talk about flavor. This is very, very good, uh, first of all. It's an extremely complicated beer from a rather simple recipe. It is really blowing me away how much this tastes like something you would get out of your typical like city craft tap room uh, for a Brett Saison. It just, um, it has all of those elements. It's a very complex and interesting beer and there's a lot to break down here. 90% of the flavor you're getting out of this beer is coming from its yeasts. So I think that's a great place to start talking about the flavor. So once again, we have two yeasts in here. We have a Belgian Saison and we have a Brett strain. So I'm gonna do my best to split between the two yeasts for each flavor. The Belgian Saison yeast is giving me a very uh, prominent pepper note. Um, it's got that, it's got a really nice like spicy coriander peppery kind of character to it. 
Um, and this is something you would get out of like a whipped beer yeast as well. It's pretty common flavor in uh, most Belgian yeasts. In addition to that, there's also a little bit of like a bubblegum character as well, um, and then a little bit of pear. Uh, there's a lot, actually, no, there's a lot of pear in this. Uh, the pear is probably the most prominent fruit flavor that's coming from the Belgian yeast. That's something I get in a lot of different Belgian strains as well. However, what I found is that the Saison strain really likes to kick out a lot more pepper and spice than the other Belgian strains. The, uh, the phenolics on this one are a lot stronger, um, I think, and that's what makes it a little bit different of a yeast strain. So then going on to the Brett side of things. Um, this one for me is mostly stone fruit, so you get a lot of that kind of pithy character. I'm getting a lot of tart citrus as well, so mostly like a lemon flavor is coming from that. And then there's that tart berry, like a, it's actually more like a cranberry. It's, it's got some of the raspberry in there, but it's mostly cranberry in flavor, I think. Um, and then you're getting a little bit of that barnyard funk in the character and the flavor. Um, that is a flavor that is difficult to describe in any other way. Um, again, it doesn't seem like that's a type of thing you would describe a good tasting flavor with, but it, it is. Uh, it actually works really well. And it's really got a, a good level of tartness to it. It's not so extreme that it, it's not really pucker worthy tart, but it's got that little background of tart and that little background of farmhouse funk um, on top of the overall Saison element. And it's actually really quite nice. Um, I can't really get any sort of hop character out of this. I'm getting a little bit of a, um, just a generic background bitterness. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's coming from the spicy phenols of the yeast or if it's coming from the actual hops uh, themselves. But it's a balanced beer. It has the right amount of bitterness overall. But overall, that dryness really helps keep it from being too sweet, which is definitely something you don't want for a Saison. I get a small amount of uh, malt complexity here as well not just all the yeast. We have uh, some cereal character, kind of like a little bit of a, a wheaty, I guess, character as well. There's a small amount of breadiness in there as well. It's nothing I would really pick up on and say, oh, that's a you know very malty beer. It's not that sort of thing, but it has just enough background complexity and it leaves a little tiny bit in an aftertaste uh, to keep the beer from being too bland. Overall, for a 7.7% beer, it's really surprising how easily this drinks. Um, to me, I would not expect this to be anything beyond maybe five and a half, maybe 6%. But for something that's almost 8%, it's really quite stealthy, very dangerous. This beer also has the side benefit of being a long-term uh, aging beer in that if I were to bottle some of this off, off of my tap, which I will do, uh, the brett that's still in solution will continue to work away at this beer. And it will continue to evolve and develop new flavors from the next you know, six, nine, even 12 plus months down the road, I think it's gonna be really, really cool to crack open a bottle like a year from now and see what has changed. It is a really beautifully complex beer and it really blew me away as to how easy it was to make this. If anything, I need a little bit of heat uh, on my fermentation to give it the best effects possible. But other than that, it really didn't require any sort of special temperature control. It just required having some sort of stainless steel element in my brew house so that I didn't have a persistent Brett uh, infection. And it's definitely well worth waiting three months for, and I would definitely like to see what happens in six. There's a couple things I could probably do better on this one though. Uh, first thing that comes to mind obviously is, well, making sure I carbonate this a bit higher. So I'd probably set that spunding valve to a higher value, uh, maybe 25, maybe if you're really feeling adventurous, 30 PSI, uh, as you're letting it sit and condition and naturally carbonate over time. The uh, second thing I would do is probably nix the aromatic malt in this. It's kind of wasted in this beer. It's not really necessary. And I think that might be the reason why it's as dark as it is. I would have liked for this to be a bit lighter in color. Um, and that would have been a little bit more appetizing looking of a beer. It's not the worst looking beer in the world, um, but it's not really the most exciting beer in the world to look at either. So um, I think it would have been nicer if it was a bit lighter in color. Beyond that, there's really not too much I have to complain about this beer. I am going to really enjoy this one for a while, but like I said, I'm going to package up a bunch of these and uh, age it for many months and see how it is uh, down the road. If you enjoyed this video and if you learned something, please hit that like button and please subscribe for more content like this. Let me know down in the comment section if you've ever made a beer like this one. And if you have, how did you do it? Did you do it differently than mine? And uh, let me know what your thoughts are. 
If you're interested in supporting the channel, please go check out the merch store, which is down below the description box, where you'll find this t-shirt and many others like it. Also, I have a list of links to Amazon and other retailers in the description box with some of my favorite homebrewing equipment that I recommend. If you happen to be in the market for homebrewing equipment and click through those links, that happens to be a great way to support my channel as well. If you want to support the channel on a more personal level, I also have a Patreon account, which is linked in the description box as well. Thank you very much to my current Patreon supporters. You guys are really reshaping this channel in a pretty amazing way, and I wouldn't be able to do it without you. If you're interested in following me on more social media than just YouTube, I also have an Instagram, and that is at The Apartment Brewer, where you can find slightly more frequent content updates about my brewing. And if you've made it this far, you guys really are my true fans, and I do really appreciate you guys watching all the way through to the end. It does make a big difference for me. So anyway, I will catch you guys in the next one. So until then, cheers.